donor advised funds. Valerie, these have quadrupled in assets in the last decade. So must be something going on here. Why are people putting all their money in donor advised funds? Well, they are simple. There is a simplistic way of, or a more simplified way of being able to give away money. People like mm-hmm. simple. And yeah. uh, there's lots like of nuance simple. to it. Yeah. Lots I of like nuance simple. to it. So yeah, there we e- can dive into all that. There is. There is. Um, and for everybody that's watching here, my name is Michael McKelvey. I'm a certified financial planner with Mariner Wealth Advisors. I'm joined by Valerie Escobar, who's also a certified financial planner with Mariner Wealth Advisors. This is Your Life Simplified. And today, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about donor advised funds. So I guess maybe the first question that folks might have if they are unfamiliar with donor advised funds, or at least if they've heard about them, but they're not really sure what they are, is why not just give that money to the charity directly? So what are some reasons why somebody might do that, Valerie? Yeah. So a donor advised fund, it's an account, you can call it, where you would give money into that account, or you can give stocks, or you can give all sorts of different things into that account. Um, And then once the money is in that account, then that account can funnel the money out to whatever charity you would want. Um, Mm -hmm. And so it's a way of uh, giving, of being charitable with your money. Uh, And the question is about, well, why use that instead of just directly giving money? So many reasons. Uh, Let's see, where do we start? I think my favorite one, or at least the one that I think seems to be most um, commonly used is because uh, it allows you to make a big lump sum contribution all at once. Uh, And let's say that you are just doing a standard deduction, right? And so if you only give $5,000 each year and you're a single person, then that charitable contribution doesn't actually help you tax-wise because the standard deduction is $12,500 for single, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, And so the $5,000, you're still itemizing, right? So let's Mm -hmm. say you're thinking, well, I did make a commitment to a certain organization that I would give them $5,000. And I happen to have this big lump sum of $20,000, but I don't want to give it to them all at once. I do want to space it out. And so what you can do is give all $20,000, put it in your donor advised fund, get the full $20,000 deduction on your taxes, uh, and then once it's in that donor advised fund, you can parcel it out and be able to give it to whatever organization, $5,000 a year mm-hmm. or whatever it was that the commitment is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, you can lump sum that money in for one year and really take advantage of that tax benefit, maybe cross over that standard deduction line so that you can get some benefits of giving to charity from a taxation standpoint. So that sounds like one of the benefits and the other one mm-hmm. you mentioned uh simplicity right so mm-hmm. we like simple uh if you're giving to maybe several different organizations throughout the year you know you got to collect the receipts tally that up at the end of the year and that's not impossible it's just another thing to do with the donor advised fund i mean it's pretty straightforward you put the money in there you can dole it out at any point in time any amount that you want to these qualified organizations and you just have to look at how much you contributed for that year to the donor advice fund because that's the tax write-off, right? Right. It's also part of the reason why they've, they've come under a little bit of scrutiny um, because people are putting quite a bit of money into these donor advice funds and there's no deadline to give that money to a charity. Now, it is mm-hmm. an irrevocable transfer, so it's not like 20 years down the road, you're like, hey – this stock actually did really well. And there's this place in Tahoe that I've been looking at with my family. So I'm going to cancel that. It is an irrevocable transfer, but you can choose what year you want to dole that out. Yeah. And I think that's part of the reason why there's probably some scrutiny there, but it's a benefit and probably a huge reason also why, in addition to the tax benefit you mentioned, these things have grown like they have, right? Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, like you said, with the scrutiny, uh, there are some sort of metrics in place to help prevent abuse. Um, again, the kind of qual- the the organizations that you have to give the money to eventually do have to be qualified. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it can't just be that, yeah, my um, my brother is in need of help. I'm going to give him enough money to go buy that lake house in Tahoe for us to go. To <laughs> um, that is not something that not you know, qualified, you, you can unfortunately. Use. Right. Sorry. 
Likely it is. I don't know if the maybe the brothers run into charity out in Tahoe or something. Uh, I I but mean, there's not. a few few lo- <laughs> few few hoops to jump through, and you know, another um, I guess another result or consequence of of that increased scrutiny uh, is that so was it last year or the year before that the government let allowed us to make. Um, to get 100% contribution yeah, or it distributions. It up during COVID. Right. Yeah. So usually, you know, if you make a charitable distribute or contribution, you can only use a little bit of that effectively to help you in your taxes. They did it. So one year is the original. Yeah. 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 And so in 2020, maybe or 2021, I don't know. This COVID year 2020 all kind of was the together. year that they started it for COVID. Perfect. Yeah. So you got 100% credit for anything you contributed, but. If you put it through the donor advice fund, it didn't count. So yeah. again, they're really trying to be pretty careful. And they, the government, you know, in theory, the theory is that a society that gives money to charity uh, is a good society. It's another right. way to benefit charities without having to tax people that allows them to to make the choices themselves and gives them a tax benefit. Totally. But, yeah. And I think this is know. a net good, right? So. Mm-hmm. I know that there are maybe some things that, uh, you know, people look at here and they're saying, okay, this is just another tax break for the wealthy. Uh, but I, you know, I do look at this as a net positive, even though there may be some pieces you can scrutinize. Um, a couple other things. So you can actually donate uh, appreciated real estate. Uh, that might be something you consider. And there's some benefits that you might want to look into a little further. There's some complexity there. Uh, If you are considering, hey, I got an investment property that I'd love to give to the church or whatever it is Mm -hmm. you might be thinking about. Um, Now, a couple strategies. We mentioned lump sum contributions. Um, Another strategy I think that's here that uh, is kind of a tax hack that people may uh, not realize is if you're giving, let's say, uh, equities or stock, and you're donating it to your donor advised fund, you're contributing to this donor advised fund. Every time you're doing that, what you're doing, if you're donating correctly, which you should be looking at likely the highly appreciated stock, uh, you can get the biggest bang for your buck. And I'll give an example on that in a second, is you're increasing your current after-tax cost basis, which each one of those moves, right? So um, as you're get, getting rid of that highly appreciated stock, um, you are um, effectively increasing that tax basis um, from a net standpoint within your account because you're getting rid of this low basis stock, and that is raising the average overall cost basis of your portfolio. So that's a benefit. And a quick example here, if it's okay, if I just run through this real quick, mm-hmm. you know, if let's it's a say. Good one. Yeah, I, you know, let's say for example, you got twenty five thousand dollars, and that you put into some after tax account, it just in a different stock, and that grew to fifty thousand. So let's say it doubled, and the investor wants to give fifty thousand, and they're in the twenty three point eight percent tax bracket. Uh, you know, if you if you're to do that, right? Let's say you give. Let's say you go the route of selling first. So you mm-hmm. make that sale. After you've donated, or sorry, you make the sale before you donate, you have to pay capital gains on that $25,000 of growth. Then you go and give that money to a charity, let's say. Um, So if you're in the 23.8% bracket, you know, you have to pay some taxes there on the capital gains. So not only are you giving less to the charity, but you also are getting less of a deduction. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is right. why, you know, when you're looking at, hey, what should I donate? A lot of times the best answer is, well, what has the biggest tax liability? And I'm not talking about monies in like an IRA or some qualified account, but some mm-hmm. monies that are unprotected outside of these vehicles, maybe a piece of real estate, maybe a stock, because you can get a bigger tax deduction, plus you give more to that charity. So let's say instead of selling and then giving it to the charity, you just gave that outright to a donor advised fund, that 50000 Well, now you get the $50,000 deduction mm-hmm. if you itemize, right? Plus that charity or multiple charities, mo- multiple qualified organizations, there's $50,000 there that you can then give out. If it grows over time, if you invested it, maybe it's more, right? So there's some yeah. real benefits to, to giving um, low basis or appreciated 
equity or assets because you can give more and you can also give back more. You know, more Mike, and to more add to that back. too, like let's say that a client has a fifty thousand dollars of stock that uh, you know the cost basis was ten thousand dollars, right? And they right. also have fifty thousand dollars in cash, and they're asking, well, should I give cash or should I give my stock? Well, what I would recommend is let's give the fifty thousand dollars in stock. Uh, to the donor advice fund right. and then use that $50,000 to buy that stock again if it was really good stock, right? So now yep. we've incre- now our new cost basis is $50,000. We didn't have to pay the gain on that uh, stock that we gave away. And so just tons yep. of strategies. Uh, and, and like you said, right, once the, once the stock moves over into the charitable uh, account, into a donor advised fund account, we can sell it. There's no tax ramifications at that point. We can reinvest it uh, right. and we can let it grow. Like, let's say you say, I, I'm going to keep it in there for 10 years, you know, and that's going to slowly get parceled out. That growth, again, is tax free. So, totally. you know, that it, the growth itself. And to be clear, you know, when you gave 50,000, that's your deduction. Later right. on, let's say that's grown to 100,000. Your charities benefit because they get a bigger, you know, contribution, but you don't get to quote unquote benefit from that the additional growth, right? You already took your totally. deduction. You just get to feel extra happy that they got double what you had initially planned out. Totally. Yeah. And that's why, again, I think it's a net positive. It makes it easy to give. And mm-hmm. uh, I think overall, that is a good thing. We're incentivizing people to give. Um, so overall, I think that's a net positive. Now, mm-hmm. um, anything else from a strategy standpoint, I think we covered most of it there. Um, I don't think, you know, there's really much else from a strategic, standpoint, unless you get like into advanced planning, but just from a general strategic standpoint. Yeah. I think maybe the last piece that I would add is that you can put, um, successor, you know, basically somebody who gets to direct. Once you put the money into that donor advised fund, you get to say, okay, I want it to go to these top charities. After I die, then I want my child to now direct it. Great. Point. Um, and so that's kind of like a nice legacy to leave behind too, is that if you want, you know, charity is something that's always been important to you, you leave it for your kids to do. If you, for some reason, forget to write a successor or you're, you know, you whatever the the successors uh, have not survived you, um, the donor advised fund company themselves will contribute that money to charity. So once it's there, I mean, it's going to definitely end up with charities somewhere. Right. Right. Again, another reason why I think it's just a net positive. You're Mm -hmm. incentivizing people to give. And at the end of the year, maybe it's November, December, it's coming up and you're like, hey, you know, I'm not sure exactly who I want to give to, but... I know that I do want to at least give some money, maybe you had a big income year, or you're just looking at the money in your bank account or in your equity portfolio after tax and saying, I don't know if I need all of this. I'm looking to maybe carve off a piece for somebody who could use it more than me. Mm-hmm. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode on donor advised funds. Again, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever it is you're listening, make sure to hit that subscribe button to not miss any industry insights from industry professionals here at Mariner Wealth Advisors. Yeah, my name is Michael McKelvey. I was joined by Valerie Escobar, Certified Financial Planner today. You guys take care. Thank you. Mariner Wealth Advisors, or MWA, is an SEC-registered investment advisor with its principal place of business in the state of Kansas. Registration of an investment advisor does not imply a certain level of skill or training. MWA is in compliance with the current notice filing requirements opposed upon registered investment advisors by those states in which MWA maintains clients. MWA may only transact business in those states in which it is notice filed or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from notice filing requirements. Any subsequent direct communication by MWA with a prospective client shall be conducted by a representative that is either registered or qualifies for an exemption or exclusion from registration in the state where the prospective client resides. For additional information, about MWA, including fees and services, please contact MWA or refer to the Investment Advisor Public Disclosure website at www.advisorinfo.sec.gov. Please read the disclosure statement carefully before you invest or send money. The views expressed in this podcast is for educational purposes only and do not take into account any individual personal, financial, legal, or tax considerations. As such, the information contained herein is not intended to be personal, legal, investment, or tax advice. Nothing herein should be relied upon as such, and there is no guarantee that any claims made will come to pass. The opinions are based on information and sources of information deemed to be reliable, but Mariner Wealth Advisors does not warrant the accuracy of the information. Asset allocation diversification is a strategy designed to manage risk, but it cannot ensure a profit or protect against a loss in a declining market. Certified Financial Planner, trademark, CFP, registered trademark, and federally registered CFP with flame design, marks, collect 
collectively the CFP registered marks are professional certification marks granted in the United States by Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards, Inc., also CFP Board. The CFP registered trademark certification is a voluntary certification. No federal or state law or regulation requires financial planners to hold the CFP certification.